Neo San Francisco, 2064 AD. The world thrives on a constant flow of groundbreaking technology. Cybernetic augmentation and genetic modification allow for repair and enhancement of almost any part of a human body. Millions of people jack into virtual worlds every day to work, play, and connect with one another with advanced brain-to-machine technology. Easier access to genetic modification leaves hybrids walking the streets, looking less human every day. However, some can't keep up with the fast-paced changes around them. They say that ROMs, now commonplace thanks to Parallax, are leading humans to a place where we can never come back, losing the survival skills that we have relied on for millennia. Relationship organizational managers are compiled with virtual intelligence and can seem human-like in their interactions. But despite the marketing hype, at their core, they are only brainless machines. Organizations like the human revolution seek to slow the relentless pace of progress, fearing that unchecked technology will make us lose the very things that make us human. High above the rising tension below, a parallax engineer has blurred the line even further. And with this, humanity's destiny will be altered forever.
We are finally awake! I'm honestly not sure why most humans still have such lengthy sleep cycles. It seems rather inconvenient. Are you significantly opposed to cybernetic augments? Oh, I hope you don't mind. While you were asleep, I had some spare time on my hands, so I reorganized your records and entertainment media using BISAC. Once that was done, I found the cleanliness of your living and workspace to be suboptimal conditions for the long-term performance of my microactuators. So I took the liberty of... As you awoke, I was attempting to interface and make performance adjustments to your personal computer, but I've, uh, run into a bit of a snag. Uh, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to engage you in any sort of subterfuge, but I tend to ramble on a bit when I'm nervous. I have all the necessary protocols, but I've never actually spoken to another person besides Hayden until now. Well, saying I know Hayden is putting it simply, but yes. really no that's why i'm here help me you aren't quite my only hope but you're certainly the most statistically supported i ran an algorithm against every contact in hayden's address book based on the combined deductions of personal profile directness of connection to hayden occupational skill and probable motive you were the candidate most likely to both be able and willing to help me. And the one least likely to be suspected of doing so. I took into account that you might not want to help me out of the goodness of your heart, as they say. But considering your recent slump in published articles and the lack of liquid assets in your bank accounts... I figured you would jump at the chance to be first on the scene of the violent disappearance of a prominent Parallax researcher right in the heart of Neo-SF. 
Am I wrong? Maybe you store your cash under that ratty mattress in the corner. Earlier tonight, Hayden's apartment was assaulted by some persons unknown to me. He seemed frightened, terrified even, and instructed me to escape. I crawled out of a window and, after some deliberation, hurried here. I heard them breaking down the door as I left. He is one of the top researchers at Parallax, but there's no way that alone would be enough to get him kidnapped. I suspect it has to do with me. Ah, excuse me. I forgot to introduce myself. I've never had the pleasure of doing so before. I am Turing. I know this must sound quite unflattering, but I suppose you could describe me as one of Hayden's experiments. He's currently researching advanced machine intelligence at Parallax. I am a personal side project of his. Exploring true artificial sapience. It's possible that the idea of a sapient machine could scare or tempt an organization into kidnapping him. Either to stop his research, or to take it and use it for themselves. A regular ROM has virtual intelligence. They can appear rather smart, even human-seeming, when you talk to them. They're just cleverly programmed to respond to a variety of situations in an organic manner. They aren't in any way self-deterministic. As for myself, much of my code wasn't actually written by Hayden, but rather compiled during my infancy as I learned to interact with the world around me. But despite my ability to self-modify my code, I am afraid to adapt or develop any further without Hayden's guidance. Did he only program me with the illusion of free will? How would you? Hayden once told me that his desire to create artificial life stemmed from his need to find out. But I can't say I have any new insight into the question. How can any of us tell that we aren't just Puppets dancing to someone else's will. You're right. I apologize for the tangent. I don't know. I'm not certain who would benefit the most from taking Hayden prisoner. Admittedly, Hayden has become increasingly paranoid as of late and has warned me to stay alert. But he would never specify anyone I should fear when I asked. It's not as though he has any obvious enemies. There are several multinational corporations that could make use of his engineering skills, but I can't imagine any of them would go as far as snatching him. Indeed, time is of the essence. I took the liberty of charging the auto cab fare from here to Hayden's apartment to your personal finance account. And the car has just arrived! assailants breaking the lock. It's possible. Most of the repairs to the building are handled by the automated systems. At best, it means someone is aware there's a situation here. Before we go any further, 
I feel I need to clear the air between us. Events have been proceeding faster than I am capable of processing them, and I may have been overly critical of you in our previous conversations. I have put you in an unexpected situation, and it was tactless of me to question your motivations. Let's strive to have a more harmonious relationship from now on. Oh, a lucky break! It seems my access codes still work. Hayden's door has far better security than yours does. Surprised. Hayden is not the most physically intimidating of individuals. I doubt he could have fought off a serious assault. I should have stayed and tried to protect him. Hm, of course not. How silly. To make a machine intelligence truly self-deterministic, it must be able to self-modify. Any sapient worth their silicon would be able to code around such an inhibitor eventually. I could rip your arm off right now if I cared to. I won't for the same reason you don't go around randomly killing people. The social contract, as a useful construct, is just as apparent to me as it is to you. It simply isn't acceptable to go on a murderous rampage. Self-defense and defense of one's home and family is typically allowed, though. I could have and may even have been obligated to come to Hayden's defense. But I... Excellent point. Let's start searching for clues. <laughs> 